What's going on everyone, Kellen Rack here, and today we're gonna to talk about sequence settings in Adobe Premiere Pro. I get a ton of people asking me questions saying, hey, why do I have black bars at the top or the sides of my videos? Why are there glitches in my export? Why are things so laggy? A lot of this has to do with your sequence settings. So today I'm gonna to show you the go-to settings for any sequence and any export that you're gonna shoot out of Premiere Pro to upload to the internet. So let's jump into Adobe Premiere Pro and we'll take a look at some of these settings. So when you come into Premiere Pro, you wanna start by opening up the sequence settings panel. So if you're on a Mac, that's Command N. If you're on a Windows, that is Control N. And this will pop up here. Now I have a custom preset here and I'll show you exactly how to do that. But to start, you can just go to the RE presets, go to 1080p, and you can just select the first one, RE 1080p 23.976. Once that's selected, you can pop over to settings because we're gonna basically build this out in our own way. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna just change our editing mode over to custom. So we'll just change that there. Then we're gonna look at the time base. Now, whenever I do my edits, I always set my time base to 23.976. This is your standard frame rate for film cinematic looking videos. This could be adjusted. Some people would go with 29.97, which is more a more fluid look, more television style, or even 60 frames. You'll see a lot of 60 frame exports. If you're dealing with video games, streaming, that type of very fluid, high frame rate look. But I would say most of the time, and in my case, 99% of the time, I'm using 23.976 frames per second as my time base. So you'll wanna set that right there. So we're gonna have our frame size be 1920 by 1080 standard HD video. We'll leave our pixel aspect ratio to square. Our field is gonna be no field progressive scan. And our display format is fine as is with 23.976 FPS timecode. For audio, you should be all set at 4,800 hertz and 48,000 hertz and display format, audio samples is all good. Now, if we come down just a little bit more, this video previews area is where you could lead to some serious issues if you don't have this properly set up. So, it's currently set on iframe only MPEG. That is acceptable. However, depending what type of footage you're bringing into your sequence, you may wanna make adjustments. Now, when I bring my footage in, it's always QuickTime files, it's always converted to Apple ProRes before I bring it into Premiere, just for smooth editing purposes. So I will generally change this to QuickTime, and my codec will be Apple ProRes 422LT. That way, Premiere knows exactly what type of file I'm bringing into my computer, it knows exactly what it's looking at and it's gonna play back as smooth as possible. If you were bringing your clips directly from your memory card or your phone, then you should be fine using iframe only MPEG as your preview file format. But when I do this, I always do QuickTime Apple ProRes 422LT because I run my clips through Media Encoder to convert them before editing. Your width and height are perfectly set at 1920 by 1080. You don't need to check maximum bit depth or render quality, and you can leave composite and linear color as is. Now, sequence name is important as well. I usually call it cut one or sequence one. That way when I'm making additional edits, I can change it, I can duplicate my sequence and have a cut two, cut three, cut four, so that I could go back if I need to make adjustments to a previous edit. You can save these settings as a custom preset, so anytime you jump back into Premiere, you'll have this ready to go for your next sequence. So you're just gonna hit save preset, and you're gonna give it a name. So in this case, it'll be 1080p 23.976, and I'll call it KREC. That way we know exactly what the preset is, it's ready to go, and we hit OK. Now, whenever you go to load up a sequence in Adobe Premiere Pro, your custom sequence will already be there. So let me show you. You can see right here, we have the 1080p 23.976 KREC. It's all ready to go. You could change the name if you wanted. Hit OK, and there it is, ready for you on the timeline. Now, if you're gonna be working with 4K footage and you wanna export the video as 4K, you're gonna to have to make some resolution adjustments. So let's jump back in and I'll show you exactly how to do that. If we shot in 4K, our frame size is gonna be double what we're working with. So rather than 1920, it's gonna be 3840. And rather than 1080, it's gonna be 2160. But you can leave your height and width as 1920 by 1080 because it's gonna give you smoother editing, smoother playback. And when you actually export your video, you'll have the proper frame rate 3840 by 2160. So no worry about that here. And we'll call this cut one 4K. 
You could save your preset as 4K, 23.976K rec, and great. So now you have a 4K and a 1080p sequence ready to go. So let's go back to the cut one and we'll look at exporting video and how those settings should look as well. So let's say we're gonna export this sequence. That is Command M on a Mac or Control M on a Windows. And here you have your sequence settings to export video. Now this can be very confusing because you've got a lot of formats, you've got a lot of presets, and Adobe does a pretty good job with their presets. However, I found a way that works no matter what, your quality is always good and your files aren't super, super huge. The way this works, you'll wanna go format H.264. Rather than doing a preset, you're just gonna leave it on match source high bitrate. That's where it defaults, so you shouldn't have to worry there. You can change your output name and where it's going by clicking on this right here. And we're just gonna work in the video tab here. So if you scroll down, your resolution is matching your source. So we're on the 1920 by 1080 sequence, so that's all set. Frame rate, field order, and aspect are all ready to go. I will click this render at maximum depth box here. That will just ensure that we have the maximum quality in our rendering. Under your encoding settings, you are all set with hardware encoding. Then when you head down to bitrate settings, you'll wanna leave this on VBR one pass. You could do a two pass, which will just do a double render to make sure that there are no glitches or issues with your export. But I have found that the one pass works pretty much every time. I haven't had any issues with it. This is where we're gonna make some adjustments. We're gonna change our target bitrate from 10 to 15. I have found that 15 is gonna give you the optimal quality of video while preserving file size. So you're not gonna have these ridiculous file sizes. The video, however, will be very high quality. You won't see any compression. It'll look great. And it works super well when you're exporting to YouTube, to Instagram, to Twitter, Facebook, wherever you're exporting on the internet. This is gonna look really, really nice. The last thing that you need to do is just check use maximum render quality on the bottom. And finally, you can export. And that'll send off your video. It's ready to go, optimized for the internet. So thanks for watching, guys. If this was helpful, go ahead and leave a like, write a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be back week after week with more tutorials, more information to help you in your photography and filmmaking skills. We'll see you back in the next one.